What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Welcome to your stimulus check update, stimulus package update and news report for Thursday, April 15th. So Democrats are still pushing to get rid of the filibuster and some say that the only way to see a fourth stimulus check happen is to get rid of the filibuster. Some Democrats are also demanding answers as to why students and ex-students are more important than people on Social Security, and then others ask why student loans have not been forgiven yet. So we have a lot of questions. We also know Democrats are looking for new ways to pay for the $2.25 trillion infrastructure bill because as of right now, currently lawmakers are saying that Democrats do not have the 50 votes in the Senate and do not have the majority of the votes in the House in order to get this bill passed. Republicans at this time are also putting together their own proposal on an infrastructure bill and reports indicate that it will be much less than the $2.25 trillion that President Biden has actually called for. As always, we have a lot to go over, so let's get right into it. First, most of the $1,400 stimulus checks have actually gone out. According to the IRS, they have sent out all the payments. However, we still know some people are yet to get their check. They, they are going to have to wait. They're going to have to do a payment trace, possibly, hopefully not, but you might have to go and file taxes in 2022 in order to get your check. That's not going to be ideal, but that's currently what we are hearing. Right now, the majority of checks have gone out though, so at least that is good news. If you have yet to receive yours, let me know down in the comment section below if you have received a, a statement, so a letter from the IRS saying they already, they already sent you your payment, or if you've checked the IRS Get My Payment portal and it says your payment has been sent out already. If it has, then you are eligible for a payment trace. Now. Right now, lawmakers are pushing for a fourth stimulus check. Many say this is not just something that is needed. This is required. This is a requirement to provide basic needs to many, many people. So the problem as of right now is that a fourth stimulus check would have to be thrown into the infrastructure bill. The problem with this is that right now the infrastructure bill does not look like it's going to pass as it sits right now. So what lawmakers are saying is that it's difficult to get any additional provisions into the bill when the bill itself is going to be in limbo because of some of the stuff that's already in it. So this makes it very questionable. How do lawmakers provide additional relief to the American people? And what they're discussing, not just infrastructure, infrastructure on its, in itself is a big deal, but lawmakers are saying, no, we need to do infrastructure, but we need to extend the, the unemployment uh, benefits. We need to expand Medicare. We need to permanently extend the child tax credits, which according to the IRS, the payment should be starting to come in July. And we need to provide a fourth stimulus check to provide for those that are still struggling to get back on their feet. But again, the problem lies in, do we get rid of the filibuster or how does the filibuster uh, pretty much just get forgotten right now? Mitch McConnell is saying that we had the chance when when he says we had the chance he's talking about you know Republicans had the chance with under former president Donald Trump because Donald Trump wanted to try to get uh, the filibuster pretty much removed so that the Senate can pass bills. Well, it never happened. Mitch McConnell said no, that will kind of uh, take away the integrity of our democracy. And right now, Mitch McConnell is praising Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin, two senators, two Senate Democrats, because they are saying the exact same thing is no, we cannot get rid of the filibuster. We have to hold strong. And it's because of this, because of Joe Manchin not supporting uh, getting rid of the filibuster, he also at this time does not support a fourth stimulus check because he says we still do not know how the $2,000 that already went out, how that's going to impact the economy. We know how the $600 did. It did very well. It helped out millions of people. It actually put money back into the economy and we saw growth. The $1,400, my guess is we're gonna see even more growth from that as well. But this is where getting rid of the filibuster actually comes in. 
because some are saying that if we do not get rid of the filibuster, there's no way a fourth stimulus check is happening, but some say there's no way getting rid of the filibuster is going to happen because Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin do not support it. Currently, experts say that getting rid of the filibuster might be the only way to get the fourth stimulus check, extend unemployment benefits, expand Medicare, and provide people on SSI and SSDI with additional relief. But what we know is that President Biden, he and he has the power to do student loan forgiveness. So I'm not, I'm not even going to mention that in that kind of list. But right now, the question is not, you know, if he's going to do it, it's when he's going to do it. Because we know he has the power to do it through an executive order. So because of that, we don't need to worry about throwing student loan forgiveness into the next bill. It's going to get done at some point. It's just when and how much. That's really it. So lawmakers are currently asking right now why students or ex-students are considered more in need than those on Social Security. Now, I've, I've done this multiple times. I've, I've mentioned this many times throughout the past couple of months is that people on Social Security are being forgotten. Not by me. Not probably not by you know, your loved ones and stuff like that, but by lawmakers. Lawmakers aren't really discussing you know, Social Security, trying to get additional relief to those that are on a small fixed income. They're not really discussing that. So what some people are saying is that Social Security recipients have always been at risk of an economy like this. So here's one thing I want to read because I, I thought this was pretty important to uh, kind of just highlight. Progressive Caucus Chair Pramila Jayapal, she said yesterday in a tweet, more than 59% of people I polled stated that they have been paying for student loans for more than a decade. Now, this was in one of her tweets, and this was following a, a poll that she did to ask her, her Twitter followers, how many of you are paying for debt that, or paying for student loans that you just received like a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, so on and so forth. Well, she said 59% of the people that she polled have been paying for these, these loans for more than 10 years. But one comment down in the down below the, the tweet said this. Social Security has been underfunded for more than a decade. So the question is, the question people are asking is, why should students and ex-students be given more relief when people on Social Security who have been underfunded for more than a decade... Why are, they got, why are they not getting anything? What's the issue with that? And so this is the insane, the insane part of this entire thing. As of right now, okay, and this is what I think is just weird, crazy. As of right now, stimulus checks are considered the only fair way, okay, the only fair way to provide relief to all Americans. Yet, this is not getting the support from President Biden or the Biden administration, at least at this time. If stimulus checks were being seen as a necessity, as a thing that this is actually getting the American people back on their feet, it's getting the, the economy back on track, we're seeing some more spending, why? Why are stimulus checks not being, being considered or being talked about as a guarantee into the next bill? In, in my opinion, again, this is just my opinion, my opinion really doesn't matter, but in my opinion, I believe stimulus checks are needed because stimulus checks would actually get the job done. All this additional talk, all the additional relief for the American people for these different you know, things, right? And providing students or students or ex-students with some student debt forgiveness. Great. I think that's needed. Uh, providing people on Social Security with additional relief. That's needed. Providing lower income households and, and individuals with some relief because that is needed. Providing renters who cannot pay their rent additional support. That is needed. Nutrition assistance. Again, it's all needed. But what is the quickest way to get all that stuff? Yeah, lawmakers can go and do seven or eight different bills and, and touch on all those points. But wouldn't it just be easier to do a stimulus check, provide it to every single eligible American based off whatever the criteria uh, lawmakers come up with? Yes, that would be quicker, that would be faster, and that would provide more relief. And that's the issue now is lawmakers cannot agree on anything. It takes them so long to pass a bill, and then it has to go to President Biden to sign it, and then it takes another you know, few days or a week. Right now, 
it just makes more sense in the economy that in the current state of the economy, we should just get something done as quickly as possible. But maybe that's just me. Again, my, my opinion doesn't matter. I'm just a guy on YouTube. I'm not a lawmaker. I'm not a senator. I'm not a representative. And I'm definitely not the president. So really, I can't do anything. All we can really do at this time is call our senators, call our, our representatives, and let them know how we feel, how their job is, what they're doing, is whether we support them or you know we disagree on certain things, and try to get them to understand our point of view. So if you haven't done that, give your representatives a call. Now, on top of all of that, we now know that Democrats don't even have the votes in the House or the Senate in order to get this $2.25 trillion infrastructure bill passed. They don't even have the votes. And this is going to make adding any additional legislation into the bill almost impossible. But at the same time, Republicans are using this time, using this, uh, this disagreement amongst Democrats to their advantage. And Republicans are going to propose their own bill. According to the reports this morning, we are hearing that Republicans are planning on proposing an infrastructure bill somewhere around the 600 to 800 billion dollar range. That is much smaller than what President Biden has actually proposed, but this is going to include roads, bridges, ports, airports, broadband, and water infrastructure. These are the things that Republicans say are actual infrastructure. And they say that they do not support spending any additional money on things that are not actual or real infrastructure. We also know that this proposal will, will, won't be a take it or leave it type of deal. And this is exactly what President Biden supposedly did is his $2.25 trillion infrastructure package was the, the framework and the base. And then he, he, he pretty much left it up to lawmakers to say, okay, let's negotiate from there. Well, Republicans are going to do the exact same thing, according to these reports, is that they're going to take their $600, $800 billion uh, infrastructure bill, and that's going to be the, the base. So what we are potentially going to see is a negotiation between 600 billion and 2.25 trillion. That's going to be where we're at. However, at this time, even though we could meet in the middle, what is the middle? 2.25, uh, you know, six, uh, what, 800, so uh, 1.4 trillion. Uh, even though we could meet in the middle of about 1.4 trillion dollars, some say that no, being that Democrats have all the power, chances are the bill is going to be a little bit higher probably closer to 1.8 to 1.9 trillion dollars. But then the next question comes up is, okay, well, if it's 1.9 trillion dollars, Republicans save the American people, you know, 300 billion dollars, great. Well, how do we pay for 1.9 trillion dollars? Well, what we are hearing is Democrats obviously want to do the corporate tax hikes, go from 21% up to 28, but Joe Manchin says, no, we need to stick it to about 25%. We know Republicans do not agree on that at all. However, some Democrats are actually floating the idea around of a pay per mile tax. Yes, a pay per mile tax. And this tax would be imposed for people that travel. So this would mean that those that travel on the roads, bridges, waterways would be the ones paying the bill. The group of Democrats says that taxing people that do not use the, this type of infrastructure is not right. But they also say that this is the type of tax that may be hard to implement and it could take many years. And yes, this is true. Why should somebody that doesn't drive, never goes on a road, why should they pay for these, these roads? Well, here's the reason why, and this is what others are saying, is that yes, that person, let's say I never drive. I never drive, right? I don't even have a car, right? I do, but let's say I don't even have a car. Never use the roads, never go on bridges, nothing. No, don't walk on the sidewalks and never use any of these things, right? Some are saying that, okay, you may not use it, but do you get toilet paper? Do you buy food? Do you buy things from Amazon that gets delivered to you? Well, how does it get delivered to you? It gets delivered on a road. It gets delivered through uh, maybe in an airplane. Maybe it goes on water, right? So this is what some people are saying is that, okay, this is understandable, a pay per mile tax. However, you are pretty much saying that only people that drive are gonna have to pay this. And this would be a bad thing because as of right now, gas taxes, probably gonna go up. Gas prices are already going up. This is gonna be a big issue for anybody that ever travels to or from work, to a daycare center, 
to a store, to a hospital, anywhere you go, you will have to pay a little bit more. But as we learn more there, I promise I will fill you in on all the details. But let's get into some of the COVID related news for today. This is actually pretty big. The CDC says, and they report that 5,800 people who have been fully vaccinated now have been infected with COVID. This is a big issue. This is a really big issue because this is not great news for the United States as the United States is currently trying to push all Americans to go and get the vaccine. But this is only going to make it very difficult for the Biden administration to sell Americans on, yes, it is safe. Uh, I, I think the vaccine is, is probably safe at this time. But as of right now, I question, is it really safe? I don't know, because as of right now, there's a lot of new reports coming out. Some are uh, pretty much just clickbait. Trying Some of these mainstream media sites are trying to get you just click on their article to go and read it or watch an interview when really they don't discuss it. They have no proof. But the CDC is saying that, yes, they are now looking into this because if 5,800 people have now been that have been fully vaccinated are now infected with COVID, that could be a big issue. And if, if they can transmit the disease, this virus, that's another big issue because as of right now, one of the things that we know is that people that have been fully vaccinated are less likely to wear a mask. So yes, the, the details are starting to come out, but as always, as I know more, I promise I will fill you in on all those details. Just wanna thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing so I can continue to keep you updated on everything that's going on. Again, thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you guys on the next one.